What's up guys and welcome to this, this is 25 years ago, edition number 8. I can't believe we've made it this far, I was anticipating this to get to 5 and then be, you know what, this is it, but you know what, it's actually one of my fave times of the week to sit down and watch these Nitros and Raws, and obviously episode 8 here will be WCW Nitro from the 5th of February 1996, episode 9 which we'll record and upload after this will be WF Monday Night Raw from February the 5th, 96. Mm-hmm. And first of all, joined by Brad, obviously, how are you doing this fine weekend? And B, what the <laughs> fuck happened to the build for this pay-per-view on Sunday? Because you said this was yeah. not going to be a good build. And I tell you what, this build was, was so fun. good, was so good, I actually turned on Super Bowl and started watching uh, the opening video package. I didn't watch anything else, but I watched the opening video oh. package. I thought it was. I thought it was really good. I thought they were gonna just get rid of. I thought they were just gonna do a load of big matches early, and 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 they haven't. I think um, you know it was a good build overall, um, and it was quite a fun show. So I'll take back what I was saying last week. Doesn't mean that what I was saying last week was not right for last week though. Oh yeah, last week they didn't do Jack Squat to build for the pay per view, but yeah, they yeah, did a, yeah. They, did, they did a hard good sell on this. So um, win loss ties always for these shows. I'm going win mm-hmm. straight up win. I've really fucking enjoyed this show. This is a fun, fun, fun hour of wrestling for me to watch. Really enjoyed it. And this is coming off me watching... Um, I watched this after watching uh, the last of the three New Japan Kurokan Hall shows. So um, this it was kind of refreshing going from the sport aspect of New Japan to the sports entertainment, if you call it, of WCW. So it was really fun for me to go f- uh, in that direction. But you've got results from... Dangerous, dirty mm. Dave Meltzer that happened in between. Not from Dave like. Meltzer. This is from Cage Match, but I have got results. Yes, from the matches, from the shows. I, they, I've opted to sort of. I'll go for Dave when there's big stuff happening, but the pay is like twelve pages long. I work. I cannot be asked reading twelve pages a week. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I got you. I got you. Absolutely. But yes. This is the this is the weekly stuff leading from last show into this show. So this is this is what happened in between from episode five, which was yep. Nitro from January twenty eighth to January twenty ninth, sorry, to episode eight here, which is February the fifth. This is what's happened in that mm. week. So I'm not going to do house shows, by the way. If you want this, it's all on cage match, but I'm only going to do the actual televised stuff. So WCW Pro only had one match on, which was February 3rd, same night as Saturday night, men of, uh, Saturday night though. So it's, um, you know, it, it's it's got two shows on, so I can understand why it being a bit shorter. But this show actually featured Meng uh, with Hugh Morris, uh, defeated Damien Stryker. Now, do you know who Damien Stryker, uh, Damien Stryker is? I recognise the name. Who is it? Edge. No way. Oh, yeah. Geez. So 25 years ago today, or a few days ago now, Edge wrestled in a WCW ring. And 25 years later, he just won the Royal Rumble. Mental. Yeah, against Men, which is King Kaku in, in WWF. But yeah, there's that match. Uh, and then Saturday night's main event is the Public Enemy, which is Johnny Grunge and Rocco Rock, defeated the Armstrongs, which is Scott Armstrong and Steve Armstrong. Uh, Sting defeated Denny Brown. I, um, I don't know who Dennis Brown is, but that, that's that's who he defeated. The Nasty Boys defeated the Barrio Brothers, which is Fidel Sierra and Ricky Santana. DDP defeated Joey Mags. Okay. Um, the One Man Gang defeated Mike Davis. The Giant with Jimmy Hart defeated Chris Nelson and Todd Morton. Uh, I think these are just a bunch of like uh, squash matches, to be fair. Harlem Heat uh, with Sister Sherry defeated Men at Work, which is Chris Canyon and Mark Starr. Eddie Guerrero defeated Lex Luger with Jimmy Hart. Whoa, whoa, Hart whoa, whoa. Eddie Guerrero knocked off Lex Luger? Yeah, but it's just by DQ. Oh, okay, okay. I was about, I was about to say, holy fuck. By DQ. Uh, this was recorded actually on January the 18th, this one. So this match was actually a, a previous match. Um, and Ric Flair defeated Dean Malenko. And I will do main event and I'll also do the um, the dark matches for tonight's WCW as well. So for the dark matches of the main event, Brian Pillman defeated the Renegade, Johnny B. Bad retained his WCW World Television Championship against Diamond Dallas Page, and probably the one that might come up with for us. Conan actually defeated One Man Gang and won the United States Heavyweight Championship. So Conan is now the United States Heavyweight what, Champion. What show was that? That was on a uh, just a. That was on main event February the fourth, nineteen ninety six. Okay, so the Sunday night on a televised show, which you can't access on the WWE Network, um, we have a new WWS Champion. Um, to be fair, yes. we never see anything of these mid card belts. Like I haven't seen the T V title yet on Nitro. I've not seen the US mm-hmm. title. Well, I saw 
a one man gang. He was in a non title match of Hulk Hogan in the main event of I think it was the fifteenth or the sixteenth or whatever it was early episode. Mm-hmm. But I haven't actually I haven't seen DDP on the show yet. It's kind of like Nitro has its own roster where it's always mm-hmm. the four horsemen, Dungeons of Doom, uh Harlem Heat, Luger and Stick mm-hmm. and the L O D. That's kind I of like assume in pay per views maybe, but not on Nitro. I think because they, they again as you say they, they they have their own separate bit, don't they? Uh, but he was on he was on the pre show of Nitro. So if we're gonna go into Nitro now so the dark matches for this before he before you start doing the show properly. Conan defeated Devin Storm, uh, retained his United States Heavyweight Championship. I don't know who Devin Storm is, but it used to be called Crowbar. If that make, if you know yeah. who that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Stud Stable, which is Bunkhouse Buck and Dirty Dick Slater, defeated the Burrio Brothers, which is Fidel Sierra and Ricky Santana. And for the WCW World Championship, uh, World Television Championship, Johnny B. Bad defeated, retained against Diamond Dallas Page. So. It's not really that major. The only thing that you really need to know going into this is Conan is now United States champion. But as uh, LK has said, we we haven't actually seen this belt yet, so <laughs> it's not really a not really a spoiler for this show. So there we uh, go. And, and I'm assuming, <laughs> come you know Super Brawl, we're going to get a fucking US and TV tar match. And that's that's what one can hope. Because I mm. mean, I think once Nitro goes to two hours in a couple of months, I think that will change. I think we'll get a lot more. Well, this show involved. was long, wasn't it? This yeah. one. Yeah. So it... this 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 one went for an hour, but obviously that's longer. So if um so it was actually forty five minutes is usually the hour long. So I'm assuming this ran over. Uh, it had like a bit of a fuck up halfway through it though as well. I don't know if you're gonna mention that or not, but watched it and then some weird flashing thing happened. I don't quite know what happened there, and then the match just went slow in the main event. I'm obviously not gonna say the result, but. Uh, do you have any idea what happened at that point? Yeah. I uh, did you watch it on the network? Yeah, it just sort of flashed and then it it, it gave me a headache and then it uh, <laughs> it, it went it went to a, just like a really crap quality. So I don't know what was happening. Yeah, I I I, I, I listened to the commentary and wrote down what they said. So you're all good. Don't worry. Um, but let's get into it. So a Nitro fifth of February. Um, commentary starts off. Obviously, you've got Bobby and um, Eric Bischoff and Mongo McMichael. They did a great job, and we say this all the time. They do such a great job of, on Nitro and on Raw. They do such a great job of hyping these shows up, and they don't. They don't seem to do that anymore. It's kind of like if you watch, you know, SmackDown, Raw, NXT, any, anything. It's just boom, a wrestler comes out and cuts a promo, not commentary hyping the shit out of the show to the point where you know what's going to happen and you're going to stick around because you know what's going to happen. I know Dynamite do do that sometimes when they have the graphics. Uh, Impact does mm-hmm. that as well, but man, E could learn from this. Just you know, imagine SmackDown starting off with Co- Michael Cole running down the show, and then him him getting interrupted by Reigns coming out. It's like you know, you get a bit of heel heat on Reigns, but it's building that show because lots of mm-hmm. times when you tune into Raw or SmackDown, and this isn't just a bash W show, I promise you that. But you actually don't know what you're gonna get, and to some people that's exciting, but to other people it's kind of like I'm gonna change the channel because it's three two hours of my time, and if I don't know what to look forward to why am i going to stick around no true they need to the, the builds are a lot more simpler and i don't see that as a bad thing i see that's quite a good thing um i mean it's they try and be clever now but it's because they hire tv writers now whereas back then they were just hiring wrestlers so they are more complex so i'll give them their due on that one but because of the complexity it's not really like why like it's not it's not logical in wrestling terms. It's logical in story terms. But we're not watching a TV program. We're watching a, essentially what is a live show. And I know it's there's no audience at the minute now, so it's not it's not the same thing at all. But even before then, it was it's still it's meant to be like a concert, and it you meant to have like the the lulls, so you meant to have like the quieter stuff, and then you meant to have like the big big numbers, and the big numbers should be peppered throughout the set. It shouldn't just be at one point or another. Um, and that's what I think the older shows have that the newer ones don't. I don't know if you agree or not with 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 that point. It's no, not it's not an insult. It's just it's just a, a change in the way it's it's written. But yeah, <laughs> it's yes. Yeah, this is booked, not written. Um, not booked. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, opening match. This is gonna piss you off a little bit. We have the WCW World Title on the line. Uh, we have Randy Savage defending against Chris Benoit. Obviously, Benoit at this point is in the Four Horsemen. Mm-hmm. Now, I know you haven't watched a Benoit match since what Benoit did. Did you yeah. actually 
watched this match. Yeah, I watched how, was, this. Yeah, yeah, how, yeah. how was the experience? It, it, I mean, I've watched matches with Benoit in, like if it's come on, but I've never actively seeked out a match and I've kind of sort of not focused on it. So this is the first time I've actually properly watched one in, say, well, about 15 years. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've seen like I've seen like you know Mania Twenty, of course. Who who hasn't? But like actually like studying his tape and that I, I I've not. There's a there's a difference, okay, between Chris Benoit the wrestler, Chris Benoit the person. Okay, let's just let's just let's just draw that line here. I thought he was very good in this match, and it pains me to say that, but I actually quite enjoyed um, his work in here. Um, and even though I did still think about him as a person, I, I, if I took myself out of it and I watched it in the mindset of someone watching 1996, this would have been a very fun match. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're, we're taking our brains back as a fan and sitting down and watching chronologically mm. everything that happened in WCW, WWF and ECW. Mm. So we don't know at this junction of time that what Benoit did. Obviously, we're not going to condone and go, oh, you know, Benoit for hum- humanitarian of the year, but at the end of the day it's you know we can't go oh just skip history as if it never happened because in the end of the day it did happen we're critiquing and reviewing and praising the wrestler not the human being and this was one of the first times you've seen Benoit he kind of hasn't been involved in the four horsemen no. stuff which is very strange mm-hmm. um what's your thoughts on them opening up the show with a world title match once again so this is the third week in a row here well, I've only watched for two weeks, yeah. to be fair. So, but but for, but even so, with with two weeks in a row, I think I think that um, I I agree with what I said before. Um, I think that they should build up to stuff because it makes the competitors look weak if they lose. Um, and eventually, what you're going to do when everyone looks weak, you're not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those mm-hmm. where it doesn't feel like we'll get to on episode nine uh, uh, when we do the raw. It'll be it was the first world title match that I've seen, Mm -hmm. you know, in episode nine, the first world title match I've seen from WWF. Whereas WCW, Mm. mate, I've seen uh, two Mm. tag title matches. And And there's a reason as well. Well, There's a reason as well why that's better. Um, Because we're not going to do Raw next week. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. That's true. A Westminster dog show. I'm not watching a Westminster dog show. I'm sorry. Damn, Um, damn, damn. But but yeah, so, uh, wait, so, uh, that's kind of done because it's a stopgap between that and and the pay per view, um, which is be the next rush, which would be the next WWF show. Just as a spoiler, um, but um, this is every week, so so that's like a big payoff at saying, well, you're not going to see us for a week. Just have this as a bit of consolation. This is let's let's let, let's just try and beat throw Raw. everything out. Yeah, <laughs> let's try and beat Raw. Though. Whereas Raw's exactly. trying to have a good show and build uh, the company to the quote next generation. Um, WCW just fl- just throwing shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. Um, Eric Bischoff again. So the first thing he talks about is two cages, Super Bowl on pay per view. That was a direct quote. Now, if I mm. said to you again, it, this is for people who didn't watch episode five. If I said to you this Sunday there'll be a double cage match, what do you fucking think is going to be on that? A double cage. Two cages in one. War games. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, I think I think you're saying war games in a way that's not saying war games, basically. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking frustrating <laughs> as fuck, and it's like, oh come on. But in the end of the day, if people bought the bought the show thinking double cage didn't get double cage, well, that's on WCW said. I wonder how many complaints they got. I, I have wonder. no idea. I can look that up. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure Dirty Dave Meltzer was all over that. Oh, there was some in, in, <laughs> interior arguments going on in the office of WCW the way that <laughs> Super Bowl's been marketed. So oh, fuck off. Um, uh, Benoit here, he's very quiet in the ring. Because, um, yeah. you know, I'm used to watching his you know WWE stuff. Um, some of his bangs he's had with Angle and he said mm-hmm. earlier, WrestleMania 20, winning the Rumble. He's very loud in the ring very aggressive, very intense. Here he's, he's got the aggression intense, but he just hasn't developed that kind of charisma yet. Um, mm. There was a fucking uh, tope dive, where which was uncomfortable, and I, that, I, I thought that you I didn't would like not that. enjoy that. I didn't like that. When he when he smashed his head against the uh, metal rail, you yeah, mean? Yeah, That was horrible. Savage. Like, that was horrible. How, yeah. do, how do I say the move without calling it the move? He did a tope suicida. We won't call it what the actual name of the move is. Um... 
uh, and Savage moved out of the way and he hit his head so fucking hard on that metal to the point where Mongo and commentary is like he's his head has generally dented these steel fucking guardrails. I don't imagine that was the first time he's done something like that either, no. which was the scary part. I reckon we're going to see a lot more of people smashing their heads against metal like that, which uh, really there's there's no reason why 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 it was. But I don't. I think I might have been a genuine accident. I don't think. That yeah, was yeah. A, I don't think he did that on purpose. purpose. Well, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then Savage hits the elbow drop off the top. Ric Flair comes out. Obviously, it's Flair versus Savage at Super Brawl on this mm-hmm. Sunday, the next pay-per-view, aka episode 10 here, so get watching a Super Brawl. Um, he, uh, Flair hides behind Liz. And then Woman, who was came out with Savage, mm-hmm. uh, starts choking Randy Savage. So obviously DQ, Flair and Anderson start attacking Savage. Woman on the apron her character work and her laughing obviously we've seen her in ecw the last two ecw shows we've covered her actual stuff is really fucking great mm. like she's such a great she, heel. she turned very quickly though didn't she she's yeah. only in there for like two weeks and then she's turned um which i hope that isn't an indication to say everyone in wcw <laughs> turns in two weeks but <laughs> that's good um <laughs> yeah hogan then comes out of a chair to make the save takes out everyone uh, Hogan with a promo Mean Gene and then Flair comes back out and attacks him again uh, the giant mm. and Beefcake come out fuck Hogan up until Savage comes back out to make the save it was just a cluster mm. but it was fun I liked it I it liked was a it. fun absolute clever. state um, but it was a good build to Super Brawl Savage then shouts at Liz for not warning Hogan about the blind side as he called it which I thought was was good. It's like, at the end of the day, it's like, Liz saw them. Why isn't she telling Hogan? Which makes sense. Uh, the story of the night is, Hogan's busted open because of the eye injury. How's that going to affect Super Bowl when it's him versus the Giant in a still cage match? He then leaves. I gave this as our favourite, sorry, your favourite pro wrestling journalist slash expert. Um, I, I'm on the star. I gave it two and three quarters. I, I, I really dug it. What do you give mm. it if you had to give it a day yeah, day starring? Right. That's a phrase of pretty much the same as you. I, I, I think the the I don't know where the quarter star difference comes from, but I thought it was just a fun show that was a, you know, a, a fun match that was that was that was fun. It was the ending was a screw finish, but at least it led somewhere. It's going to go to that pay per view on Sunday. So, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was really fun. Uh, was it this match by the way that Orndorff was in, or was that the next one? No, no, no. Orndorff comes out uh, later on. Right, okay, that's fine, because he hit some of a broom, but I can't remember if it was this one or not. But regardless, it was a fun match. Um, you know, woman turning, and she's now a member of the Four Horsewomen, uh, Four Horsemen. Yeah, brilliant, that's a good good storytelling. Yeah, because I know we're going to have a... Oh, no, that's spoilers. Um, no spoiler. <laughs> yeah, no spoiler. No spoiler for people watching first time in order. So we have Taskmaster and Hugh Morris against Arn Anson and Brian Pillman. Finally! Some mm-hmm. continuity between last week to this week. Because if you guys mm-hmm. remember, on the last episode of Night Show we covered, it was that whole build of Arn Anderson and Pillman, and they kind of tension them on the ranks of the Horsemen. And you got the Dungeon mm-hmm. of Doom who took them out. So I like this. Um, yeah. Brian Pillman, it's my weekly appreciation. How fucking magnificent is Brian Pillman, man? Like, on- honest to God, the, the character work, the mannerisms. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely ahead of its time. Like if, imagine, it's a shame. imagine yeah. if he how, was when, born now. Yeah. Imagine the star it'd be. Oof. Yeah. How long's left of Brian Pillman? Because I, I, didn't he pass away in 1996? We haven't got long uh, left with him, no, has he? We, we've got till uh, uh, November-ish, 97. Oh, good, good. Because I really liked him. It's one of the first times I've ever seen him. And I thought, I'd only watch him for a few months and then, I've, and then he's gone. Uh, no, he was he was brilliant in this match. Um, uh, this was the one where Paul Orndorff used a broom, so I'm confusing this with the last one. Um, he is he like a member of the Four Horsemen now, Paul Paul Orndorff? No, 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 no. Paul Paul Orndorff is um, so basically, yeah. The end came. It, the way they shot it was someone hit Anderson on Anderson. Over you the could head see with it clearly, though. You could see you it was see... Paul Orndorff, but you know, yeah, we'll, it will digress. <laughs> um, and then Taskmaster. Uh, uh, keeps whipping Pillman with a belt, so that's a DQ. Um, makes sense because it sets up Brian Pillman versus Taskmaster, which is a strap match at Super Brawl. Perfect, decent, winning. But then we have Paul Ondorf coming to the announce table, says, 
you never know when payback happens. So then we know he was the one who took out Anderson. And the reason why this is is because at Clash of Champions, which was an episode you didn't join on, I think that was the episode before, you started joining for for WCW and all the shows. But uh, Paul Londoff got taken out by the horseman. He got like pile driven on the concrete floor and shit. Um, so this is him basically coming back and saying he's coming after the horseman. So I enjoyed it. Yep, definitely. Um, yeah, um, I don't really have much more to say. I thought, thought the horsemen were looking quite strong here. Um, obviously, the DQ finish, you know, I, I'm sick of DQ finishes, but there was another DQ finish, but it was fun. Um, again, it, it, it didn't outstay its welcome or anything like that. It, it built the four horsemen up as a good tag team pretty well or whatever quadruple uh, faction pretty well um and yeah it sold the next pay-per-view so it's done done pretty much all, all it needs to do really isn't it yeah it's, it's all, and, and all much needs to do. Yeah. this is one of the few times i haven't seen arn anderson wrestle yet on this 25 years ago series i've seen his older stuff i haven't really mm-hmm. seen him in the kind of 96 97 98 era mm. arn anderson was fucking great he looked like a proper man's man like he looked like he could kick the shit out of you. And he wasn't buff. He wasn't jacked. He's just in no. great. He just looks like a man. Yeah. Yeah. Good good, good condition. Absolutely. Then we went to Ric Flair versus Marcus Bagwell. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't like this match. It bored me. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, 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 it actually says that the Wrestling Observer Newsletter made it three and a half stars on this cage match thing. I've not checked the actual Observer to check if that's true. But if it is... That's well above what I would have gave this match. Damn, I think maybe uh, Mr. Ric Flair has been sending Mr. Meltzer some uh, spoilers then, or some backstage dirt for Dirty Uncle Davey. They were boy. friends, weren't they? Oh. I swear, I swear, I swear, they were actual friends. Like outside of this, it's probably why it's such a high, high uh, mark. Sorry, sorry, Dave, but it's probably why it's such a high mark. Um, but yeah, I thought it was just a bit sloppy, um, and I'm not. I thought. Marcus Alexander Bagwell may have had a bad deal in WWF when he was there for like a mat- one match. Watching him here, he's not great, is he? Let's be honest. I, I gave it two and a quarter because I, I was in a generous, generous mood. I, get, I was feeling generous, just in case you enjoyed it. But man, three and a half? What the fuck was he watching? Like, because this, because like, he was all right. Like, Flair bumped around like an absolute madman for Bagwell. You got to give Flair that. Um, mm-hmm. But man, the figure four got the win. Eesh. It was just, uh, yeah. Maybe he's adding in because during this, during the match, that was when Paul Londorf came to the announce table. So maybe he's adding in that bit as well. Yeah, I guess that counts as part of the match. Maybe he's it? like a massive fan of Paul, Paul Londorf and he wants to see Paul Londorf versus Arn Anderson go at it. Well, Paul Londorf was very good for 1986, but we are a decade past that. Sorry, uh, that was a bit of a slight, a slight comment. But no, um, no, nah, the match was all right. But like, it's Ric Flair that's carrying this, isn't it? Mark, Marcus Alexander Bagwell. He's not Buff Bagwell at this point. He's got a shit name uh, for a shit wrestler. Uh, see, that's the thing, though. When we get to him being Buff, as in Buff, um, Buff Bagwell, I actually really enjoy his work. Um, Judy Bagwell be... on a pole match. Hey, hey, that's that's not him. <laughs> um, we don't do Judy Bagwell on a pole. I can't wait till we get to that era, by the way, just so you know. In, in a few years, touch wood. I'm very excited to start <laughs> analysing some 2000 WCW and trying to keep up with it. Um, that'll basically become a full-time job. Um, but fucking, no, this... this <sighs> Buff Bagwell's great. I have really enjoyed buffing uh, when he's NWO Buff Bagwell. I really that's... enjoy him. I'll give him. I'll give him a chance because I am. I am. I'm contractually forced to watch him now. Um, but if he's if if it's shit, I'm gonna say it's shit. I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, then we went to Ric Flair. Not Ric Flair. He's been on the show so much. Oh, we have the World Tag Team Titles. Mm. We have Legion Brilliant of Doom. Match. Agreed. Mm. Legion of Doom against Lex Luger and Sting, the tag champs. I, I for one, because we're kind of seeing in this before we get down to break it down the match we're kind of actually getting to the point where Luger's being very heelish and Sting's mm-hmm. that baby face is kind of like you know what we shouldn't be doing this this is a bit wrong is this the slow transformation into Crow Sting where he's kind of questioning himself that's what I want to know because I do not know let me check let me I check do not something. know how he becomes Crow Sting 
and I, I'm very interested and intrigued to see how he actually does become it. Because obviously his yeah. stuff with uh, Hogan and Late Night 7 is some of the biggest draw and stuff mm. in the history of the wrestling business. So mm-hmm. it'd be very interesting to see how that happens. No, I was actually going to see when the actual film came out. It was 1994. So yeah, could be two years at this point from the original release of Brandon Lee's film, The Crow. If you haven't seen that film, by the way, as an aside, it is a brilliant film. It's dark as hell. Um, so, And he did actually die making this film. So if you're going to watch it, uh, watch it with a... Yeah, do you know the story about The Crow? No, 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 go for it. A lot of people probably wouldn't either, so go for it. He, uh, he uh, was shot with a real gun. Um, they put like fake bullets in but one of them accidentally put in a real bullet and it shot Brandon Lee with the gun, which is um, Bruce Lee's son. And he died during make- making that film. Um, so he actually died before the release of that film. Did he get it's a jail? A... Did the guy who shot go to jail? No, 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 it was an accident. So he was on a film set. He had a, f- he had a real gun, but he was well, meant to shoot a fake bullet. What would he do with a real gun for? knows but they that's that's how he did it they put a, they were meant to put like a pellet in it yeah, yeah. but they put an actual bullet in it and no sh- no shit he fucking died fuck me yeah that's making that film what yeah, a horrible yeah, yeah, yeah. Way to die what a horrible way to yeah, die yeah. but it's a really good film so so if you watch it when the sting turns into the crow sting because i love that film and i would recommend you to watch it you might see loads of little characteristics about him so it's like hiding in the shadows it basically it's about a guy that's uh been killed in like a, a hit and run accident in like a murder spree um he comes back and avenges his his uh his step wife as well and his and his and his and his daughter that he's left behind so he kills all the villains in the film so it's, it's like a superhero film but it's really dark um so yeah i would recommend watching it stink um car- copies a lot of what he does um which is why he's called the crow sting okay and when he gets to that point, I would recommend watching it. So, uh, not yet. I don't think it's a turn yet because, as I said before, it's quite a dark, vengeful character. Sting isn't dark or isn't vengeful here. He's quite... Yeah, but he's slowly... You know, he's involved with Luger, who's pretty much a cheating son of a bitch. So, we're kind of on the process of the wheel starting to turn on the the Sting heel turn. That's how, that's how I perceive it, anyway. So, you think it'll, you think it'll snap? basically yeah i think we're gonna get a slow build here where he's eventually gonna go you know what i don't know what i'm doing anymore i'm with luger i, I need i need to go and he just leaves and he comes back as this kind of crow guy that's that's my prediction again i know nothing about you know from 96 the only thing i know that happens is um the nwo forming that's literally as far, and obviously some bangers at halloween havoc etc mm-hmm. uh, and the cruiserweight division forming but besides that it's i don't really know much because I've never watched it chronologically including the Nitro so it's actually really fun but what we'll do is when the first Crow Sting appears we'll watch the film and we'll do a review of the film okay that sounds fun anyway, yeah so anyway back to I've... fucking LOD and Luger and Sting before we go fucking 24 hours <laughs> talking about Crow <laughs> um, so it, this has only took an LOD Road Warriors so I don't want to fucking call them 13 days into so they debuted at Clash of Champions 13 days prior they're already number one contenders for the tag titles mm. fuck me but they're, they're also they're also the road warriors yeah do yeah, I need to say so I, I, I get that they might have debuted 14 days ago but they're not a jabroni team yeah, at I all know, but it's in like they've yeah. come back to WCW and they're getting a title shot already when they were told on Clash of Champions you have to go to the back of the line so they were in the back of the line they won on Nitro last week. Actually, no, they yeah. didn't. Didn't they lose? I don't know. Let me have I a look. swear LOD lost. Nitro number 22. Yeah, have a look. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty convinced that they lost last week. Or did they win and then cut a promo post-match? They won. Who did they beat? The Faces of Fear, Meng and the Barbarian. They oh, won yeah, because that was a fucking banger, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, they, 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 so, yeah. So, yeah, they were at the back of the line. They've beaten the number one contenders, so they're, they're, that's how it works, isn't it? Yeah, I we'll don't, go that. We'll go Yeah, yeah, I, I, I actually think that I... Um, I've not seen Clash of Champions, so I can't have that much of an opinion from that point, but I think, yeah, I, I don't see why the Road Warriors wouldn't have a championship match. So, yeah, right, you know, I, just, I, mean, I, I think that, you know, when, when you know they should re-establish who they are and then boom and then start beating higher profile but teams I think, I think build that up that, the that chase that big... build up the chase build up the yeah. chase for winning them tag belts 
put it this way though i think they're that big that people already know who they are i think they're like when aj styles went to wwe people already know exactly who it is they don't need to do that do you know what i mean yeah that's very fair that's that's very fair point um but what happened in this one is the power in the building went out and on the network it's it's literally had it it's just underneath kind of on the screen sorry kind of Uh, it has this kind of graphic which says presented the most complete form possible due to technical difficulties that's what it says on the screen and that's what w network have put in there that's not what wcw put in there the end of the match was terrible i thought because after that power went out okay number one it gave me a really nauseating feeling because it's yeah, like it a was horrible so screeching noise it was just all of a sudden it was bang <laughs> and the lights oh the lights oh yeah. my days and then and then afterwards it was just a headlock i remember being on the floor for like three minutes and a headlock or something i was like this is sh- this this was really good and now that the act of God has made it shite. Yeah, it's it is what it is. It was it was. I actually had on my notes yeah. like I'm really enjoying this, and then bam, it just happened. And I was like, "Fuck's sake!" Um, the finish was fucking gash, like so bad. So Hawk just goes after Sting, which the referee leaves the ring to go see what's going on. Luger then uses some wooden gimmick, which Jimmy Hart dropped mm-hmm. on Animal on his back. One, two, three. Luger celebrating like crazy. Sting's like what the fuck why did you why did you do that you know we're we're baby faces you don't do that um and then obviously mean gene goes in to interview lod and they said that they want the winners of the harlem heat versus luger and sting at super brawl so i like that it's promoting luger and sting versus harlem heat for the wcw tag belts for the pay-per-view which is good and we're kind of building to does this mean next luger week sting or... versus road warriors yep yeah so. Yeah, I thought it was very good. Um, I love. I, I quite enjoyed this. I, you, you, I don't get the finish wasn't gash. The actual finish was okay, but it was just the last bit of the match was a bit terrible. But the actual way it ended, in terms of the story that, it, that emanated off it, well, I thought was quite strong, and I thought it was quite a good way to end this show. Personally, to be fair though, this Jimmy Hart and Luger thing, they keep working together. So um, it's very interesting mm-hmm. to see what what is where it's gonna where it's gonna go. But I, for one, am really. I'm praying we get a Sting versus Lex Luger belter. That's got to be the plan here, surely. It's got to be Luger turning heel and Sting. It's mm. either Sting's kind of questioning himself and then leaving, or we're going to get Luger and Sting heel Luger. If it's Luger, if it's Luger and Sting, it won't be Crow Sting yet, though. It's, it's no, all no, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet, not, no, oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. But I gave the match two and three quarters. Um, I just mm-hmm. thought it was if it didn't have that kind of electrical thing, you know, you're looking at three, three and a half. But overall, man, you know, you're looking at everything on this show that can't be helped well it might have been it might have actually been able to be helped i think it was the building i think it was just the building it's kind of not their their unless they unless they overloaded like a fuse or something in which case it it kind of is but (laughs) regardless regardless it's not the wrestlers it's not the wrestlers fault anyway say that much no 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 Um, so yeah, it's a it was a pretty decent show. I thought it was a very pretty. good show. Uh, I was pumped for it. I was waving my WCW fucking flag up in the air like whoop whoop whoop. Can't wait for Super Bowl on Sunday. Um, <laughs> to the point where I loaded it up, and then yeah, I did fall asleep straight after. But <laughs> I loaded it up and I had intentions of of watching the show before Raw. So because mm. I watched the the Raw yes last night, but I watched the night show before that, and instead of watching the Raw, I was like that got me so pumped for the pay per view. I'm just going to turn the paper on now, but I fell asleep. Are we going to actually run through the card for the next show? Yeah, by the yeah, way? yeah. That might be an idea. Don't don't run through the Nitro card because we don't want to. No, no. Give I'm going to do for the people. next for, for the next show in each paper in each promotion. So for when I do an ECW one, I'll do the next ECW show. When I do the next WWF one, I'll do the next WWF show. So for for this, I'm only going to do the paper. If you don't worry, I'm not going to do the Nitro. Good, okay. Good. So the matches are a Falls Count Anywhere tag team match, the Nasty Boys, which is Brian Nobbs and Jerry Sags versus the public enemy of Johnny Grunge and Rocco Rock. Which that should be, be great. Fun. That should be great. They had a match at Clash of Champions, which was pretty damn savage, like proper brutal. Sounds ECW as well. Yeah, very, very. Um, so you got Johnny B. Bad with Kimberly versus DDP for the WCW Television Championship match. Nice. Right, yep. Tag team match, obviously, Let's Luger and Sting versus Harlem Heat of Booker T and Stevie Ray. Mm-hmm. Uh, United States Championship match Conan versus the One Man Gang. Hmm. 
Okay, I am skipping over a match here because I think it spoils the result for the previous one. But Brian Pillman versus Kevin Sullivan with Jimmy Hart in an I Respect You strap match. Yep. Uh, the WCW World, oh, World Tag Team match again. Oh, uh, there you are. Don't know, don't know, don't know. Yeah, there you are. There you are. Bro, what is this one? Oh, so I, oh, I'm not going to say who they're against. I'm not going to say who yeah, they're against. Who they're against. Oh, you've got but, a spoiler, you unlucky man. Uh, it's a spoiler, but I'm not going to say who, who they're against. So that, so that match actually happens on this pay-per-view. Um, yep. The World Heavyweight Championship Steel Cage match. Randy Savage with Miss Elizabeth versus Ric Flair with Woman. And a Steel Cage match. Hulk Hogan versus The Giant with Jimmy Hart and Kevin Sullivan. I will never spoil the show, by the way. Yeah, so, absolutely good stuff, good stuff. But why the fuck? Why the fuck is the... I don't know why they're having two. Event. I don't know why they're having two tag team championship matches on the same night, though. Isn't that a way of making them sort of heal? Yeah, maybe. Regardless, regardless of who they're against, I'm obviously not going to say that part. But whoever wins the against Harlem Heat and Lex Luger and Sting's going against the Road Warriors, isn't that making the Road Warriors a bit of a heel yeah. team? No, because if they're coming out saying, you know, we want you guys and we want you guys tonight, there could have been a promo or something along those lines. So it's not straight yeah. after, so that's cool. Um, the fact that Hogan's in the main event over Savage and Flair for the heavyweight title is a bit of a piss take, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, what day do you want to record that so people can kind of know when they have to, to watch? Well, when's it out? Pay-per-view? Well, that is a very good question. If we're on the 5th, that means it comes out on the 6th days, the 11th. So the 11th. So the 10th or the 9th seems about reasonable, doesn't it? Because yeah. we want to try and get it as close to the actual release date as possible. Yep. So should we should we should we aim for the same for the tenth? The same for the tenth. There we are. The tenth of February. That's Beautiful fine. Stuff. That gives you a bit of a break as well. Um, so that'll be when we do the Super Brawl. So thank you for watching. Anything you wish to promote before we wrap uh, this bad boy up? No, I'm on Twitter on Bradcasty170. But other than that, you know, uh, feel free to just listen to the show and uh, and, and get involved that way. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we'll be back with episode 9 covering WWF Raw. And then, obviously, Super Brawl coming on the 10th for you guys to watch and enjoy. If listening on any of the podcast platforms, follow, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you're listening on the YouTube, hit the like, drop a comment, and smash the subscribe button. With that in mind, stay safe, stay well, and we'll be catching your asses down the line.